Have you seen that Veritasim video about the prisoner riddle that seems impossible to understand, even if you know the answer? You might ask, does the Veritasim video have an element of truth to it? In that video, Derek proposes an unlikely mathematical solution to an odd problem, which is fascinating. But what he didn't do was prove it. Ah, so then it's not an element of truth. Well, I don't know. He proposes a mathematical solution to the problem, but never bothers to actually test it out with experimentation. So then you're gonna disprove him. I don't know, but I wanna find out. I don't know much about abstract mathematical theory, but I do know how to write software to run experiments that will yield us the data we need to prove once and for all whether his theory is right or wrong. But enough talk, more data. It's data time! I'm data. The Prisoner's Riddle is an interesting one. If you're unfamiliar with it, you should definitely check out the Veritasium video for a full explanation. Here is the riddle. Let's say you have 10 prisoners numbered one through 10, queued outside a room. In this room, there are 10 boxes numbered one through 10. Each box has a prisoner's number hidden inside it, but the numbers are shuffled, so you don't know which box contains which number. The first prisoner is allowed into the room and told to open one box. If the open box contains the prisoner's number, then they have completed the task successfully and they exit the room. If the prisoner does not find their number, they try another. The prisoner is allowed to open half the boxes in the room. So if the prisoner can't find their number after five tries, then they have failed the task. The prisoners are not allowed to change the numbers during their time in the room, so they have to leave the room just as they found it. And they leave the room through the exit, not the entrance, so they aren't able to communicate with the other prisoners after they've seen inside the room. Each prisoner is presented with exactly the same situation. If all 10 prisoners are able to find their numbers, they are all set free. But if just one prisoner fails to find their number within five tries, then all prisoners are executed. Ugh. That sounds morbid. Well, it's just a thought exercise. And it's confusing. This element of truth is not so elementary. Let's walk through one example. Prisoner one enters the room and randomly decides to open box number six. This box contains number four. So when the prisoner decides to pick box five, this box contains number one. The prisoner has successfully completed the task and leaves the room through the exit. Then prisoner two enters the room and picks box number one. This box contains prisoner number seven. Then they pick box nine and get six. Then they pick seven and get 10. Then four gives them the number three. Then six gives them the number four. Now all five tries have been exhausted, so the prisoner has failed. The entire experiment is a failure and all 10 prisoners are executed. Each prisoner has five chances to find their number inside of 10 boxes. So essentially, each prisoner has a 50-50 chance finding their number, same as a coin toss. The odds of two prisoners randomly finding their numbers is one in four. The odds of failure double for every additional prisoner. So the odds of all 10 prisoners succeeding is one in two to the 10th power, which is about one in a thousand. That's about one tenth of 1%. These odds are very small. Now, let's scale up this problem by an order of magnitude. Let's say there are 100 prisoners queued up outside a room with 100 boxes, each randomly containing a prisoner number. Each prisoner now gets 50 tries to find their number, so they still have a 50-50 chance of finding their number. But now, all 100 prisoners have to be successful in order for them to avoid execution. This is like flipping a coin heads 100 times in a row. The odds of doing this are one in two to the 100th power, which is a really small number. And if we increase this to a thousand or a million prisoners, the odds just get worse. This sounds like a terrible problem. You'd never be able to win. Well, so far, the prisoners have been randomly picking their boxes. However, they can strategize their choices. Wait, you said they couldn't communicate information with each other. Yes, but they can talk to each other before the experiment even starts and coordinate their efforts. But how would that help? Uh, no matter what they choose, they'd only ever have a 50% chance of success. Yes, but the claim that the Veritasium video makes is that there is a strategy that allows them to succeed independent of the number of prisoners in the queue. What? How would that work? The solution is to use a circuit. Each prisoner starts by opening the box with their prisoner number on it. Then when they find the number inside, they go to that box. Then they open that box and go to that box and so on. So in our 10 prisoner problem, prisoner number one would first pick box number one and find number seven. Then go to box number seven and find 10. 
then go to 10 and find two, then go to two and find five, and then go to five and find number one. Success! Then prisoner number two would come in and open box number two, then go to five, then one, then seven, then 10, and find number two. In fact, we can graph these boxes as circuits and see that this particular ordering of numbers produces two circuits, each being five nodes long. This tells us that no matter which number we start with, we will always loop back around to our number in exactly five tries. Not every shuffle will give us loops that have five or less nodes, but it will happen about 30% of the time. And if we get a shuffle that yields us these small loops, then all prisoners will succeed if they use this circuit process. I'm not gonna get into explaining why this is. If you're interested in the theory, you should definitely check out the Veritasium video, which goes into the theory behind this in more detail. But his claim is that this solution yields a success rate of about 30%. And more crucially, this success rate is essentially the same whether you do it with 10 prisoners or a billion. In fact, the claim is that the probability of winning with 100 prisoners is about 31%, and the probability of winning it with 1 billion prisoners is about 30%. Wait, those are basically the same odds. That's right. This solution removes the scale from the equation. It'll work the same at any size. So then what's there to prove? Well, this math is all well and good, but the Veritasium video didn't actually test it. I want to actually run the experiment to see if the actual results match the theoretical answer. You want to actually execute prisoners? No, I forgot, I have to be careful when I use the word actual around you. I don't wanna run real world experiments, but I can write some simple software that runs a simulation in the computer thousands or even millions of times to see if the overall odds match these calculations. I wrote a small script in Golang to run simulations of this experiment. Essentially, I'm representing the boxes as an array of integers that I then shuffle using a randomizing function. Then I create a function representing one prisoner attempt by looping through the array of numbers using the circuit lookup until I find that prisoner's number. If my number of attempts is greater than half the number of boxes, I stop and fail the prisoner. I then create a function to run a simulation by looping through the prisoners. If just one prisoner fails, then the whole simulation is a failure. If all prisoners find their number, then the simulation is counted as a success. Then I run the simulation again and again, thousands or even millions of times, all the while aggregating all of the successes and total simulations into an overall average success rate. So let's actually run the simulation with 10 prisoners. My first run yields me a failure. If I run it again, I get another failure. So far, we're 0 for 2. On my third run, I get a success. So now we're successful 33% of the time. If we continue to run the simulations, we start to see the overall average varies from run to run, but basically it stays around 30%. If we run the simulation a thousand times, we get an overall result just over 33%. And if we run this a million times, we get a number that looks an awful lot like the number the Veritasium video said we should get. We can easily repeat the simulation with 100 prisoners and see that our result is pretty similar to the Veritasium results. If we run it with 1,000 prisoners, looks like we still get the same answer. If we run it with a million prisoners, we get, oh no, this is not gonna work. Even with more parallelism, this is just way too much work for my computer to handle. Okay, I didn't have to do this, but I'm gonna have to make some assumptions here. I don't actually need to manually compute every prisoner's run. We already learned from the 10 prisoner problem that if a shuffle of numbers gives us circuits that are less than five in length, then we know that all prisoners will succeed with the circuit solution. So really, all I need to do for the million prisoner example is analyze a shuffle. And if all circuits are smaller than half a million, then we know all prisoners will succeed. And I don't have to to actually run every prisoner through the experiment. Make sense? No? Too bad. This video is getting too long as it is. Leave a comment if you want me to discuss this in more detail. Okay, now that I have a way to run this experiment a million times with a million prisoners in a timely manner, it took me 24 hours to compute this using all the cores in my CPU, I can say that the end result is still pretty good compared to the Veritasium results. Running it on a billion prisoners? <sighs> yeah, there's no way I can test this. We're just gonna have to give this one to Veritasium. It's just too huge for my computer to process in any reasonable time frame. You know what? Maybe this is a good argument for theoretical solutions. Some solutions are just too difficult to test practically. Okay, from all this, we can see that no matter the number of prisoners we have, the success rate is always about 30%. More importantly, the actual results very closely match the theoretical calculations that the Veritasium video presented. So Veritasium was right. Veritasium was right. There is an element of truth to it. I'm not sure the folks at home even get that reference, but 
Yes, it's true. Well, that's anticlimactic. You did all that work and all you found was that it was right all along. Well, no, I, I think it's important to verify your calculations. And you spent most of this video just setting up the problem. People could have just watched the original Veritasium video. All right, all right, calm down. Look, testing, experimenting, simulating, or whatever you want to call it should always be a part of good science. In fact, you could say it's an important element of every truth.